So today is a really important conversation, important lesson. So here's the thought for the day. Make every decision, sorry, move my camera here. Make every decision from inspiration, not negative motivation. Make every decision from inspiration, not negative motivation. Okay, so let me go deeper into this. I've said this in different ways before, but I thought of this yesterday, like, and it landed when I kind of thought it through, it landed very powerfully. So let's kind of talk about um, the brain a little bit. So my background's in neuroscience. So I'm going to simplify this, but I want you to understand the, the neuroscientific nuances of this. And I think when you really get the way the brain operates when it comes to this, it becomes less esoteric and very, re very real for people, okay? So when I say make decisions from inspiration, not negative motivation, what that means distilled more simply is that you make decisions moving towards desire as opposed to running away from fear. Does this make sense? How many of you are making decisions to avoid pain as opposed to because you're so inspired? So if I were to do like a YouTube video, it would be like, I would have a saber tooth tiger running and me just being chased by it. And like <laughs> the video would be five minute reel of me just being chased by this fucking saber tooth dragon. Like this is what you guys look like most of the day. It's like, boom, boom, trigger, run away, run away. It, it, it's just reactive versus, oh my God, like I'm so inspired by this thing. I'm, I'm going towards inspiration. You know, like when you're watching a show, a movie and you're like captivated, you see a book or you listen to something I'm saying, you gotta, I gotta rewatch that. Like that's inspiring. You know, I gotta go do that thing. I gotta go, like that's following inspiration. But most human beings avoid, they run away from pain and fear, and it's the wrong energy behind what they're doing. So let me explain it at the level of the brain. You have a part of your brain called the amygdala. We've all heard of this. The amygdala is the most ancient part of your brain. It's why they call it the reptilian brain, because the brain evolves from back to forward. I'm going to keep this very simple. We don't need to go into this whole like I'm not going to have a PowerPoint presentation of the brain, but I just want you to understand the importance of this, okay? Some of you already know this information, but just bear with me. The brain was formed back to front. The amygdala is the most primal part of the brain. It's called the reptilian brain. The amygdala is the part of the brain that scans for danger. It's literally like the boop, 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 tiger, tiger, lion, bear, run, run, run. It is our most primordial part of the brain. It's constantly scanning for danger, okay? Now, Everybody listen with your earballs. Yes, I said earballs. That is an Adele coined term. You can put it on a t-shirt. If you are someone that has had a traumatic, if you've had a trauma response in your life, which I don't know a human that has not had a trauma response in their life, and it is not fully processed, your amygdala is, is um, when they've done this on a, a functional MRI, the amygdala is always more engulfed. It's actually bigger for people that have had traumatic experiences in their life. Does this make sense? Just follow my train of thought. So what did that mean? That the, uh, the natural state of someone who's had, and what is traumatic? Let's just deconstruct this one step further because I'm going to have someone focus group and say, is that traumatic? And let me just give it to you straight. Any unprocessed trauma that you've had. So it could be trauma from childhood. It could be trauma that's going on right now in the world. It could be the fact that we're um, constantly in a fake place of fear. It could be if you had a parent with a psychosis or a drinking or addiction. It could be if you had uh, abuse in the family. It could be if you're in an abusive relationship with your partner, your amygdala is already extremely um, engulfed, inflamed. It's already sending more signals of, of scanning for danger than normal people's amygdala. Do you got that? So far, so good? Okay, why is this important? So the amygdala, scanning for danger, and it sends signals to your hippocampus where we store memories, and it affects how we store memories based on the fear. 
And then it has this, this loop, feedback loop that's going on. Danger, danger, fear, but it evidence from for my fear, blah, 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 blah. Raise your hand if you can see yourself in this diagram that I'm explaining right now. Okay, the emotions that come with people that have high hippocampal and amygdala response is on the heightened end. It's anxiety, overwhelm, panic, aggression, um, very like reactive. And on the low end, it's apathy, depressive type symptoms. Got it? Because the fight or flight and freeze kind of situation. So when someone's extremely like reactive towards me, I know their amygdala is going off like crazy. So this should actually give you a lens of compassion for people. Like when you see someone like, you're wrong. It's like amygdala. Got it? So this can explain the world at large right now, by the way. Or you see someone very apathetic. You, you probably heard of my stories today. I've been talking about the marshmallow blob. So the marshmallow blob is someone who is very just like through life all the time. There's no energy. There's a sense of apathy. There's, it's just like, right? And they want these big things in life, but they're energetically not a, a match because their amygdala is constantly like, um, actually this is very interesting as you know I, I'm a science nerd and a nature nerd so if you look at an animal if an animal is captured let's say a deer is captured by a bear do you have you ever watched a bear eat a deer you can google it the deer is actually calm when it's being eaten because their brain is sending off signals of not stressing so that they die peacefully this is actually facts like I'm not this is not stories I'm making up this is true right so so some of you are so apathetic because you're in total amygdala response as well. Make sense? Okay. So you're either extremely reactive or you're extremely apathetic. Both of those are high amygdala responses that are a trauma that's not been worked through the body. Yes? Raise your hand if you know that if you feel like you're a high trauma response, like you, you get activated as a trauma response and raise your hand if you find that you go low as, an act, as a response. Okay, cool. We all, by the way, all of us have had this. It's the brain. It's not like anyone's brain is better than the other brain. The brain is the brain. The human brain is the human brain, okay? But I'm bringing in this neuroscience so that you can start to actually also go, wow, this person is so fucking reactive. Their amygdala must be going like crazy. What kind of unprocessed trauma does this person have? Now that's a very different lens. Okay, moving on. So then we have the more newer part of the brain called the neocortex and our prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex develops in the 20s. The prefrontal cortex is where we, we reason, we figure things out, we plan. It's our planning center. And the neocortex is what they call the spiritual center of the brain. It's where God is housed, essentially the higher self, okay? Compassion, empathy, love, et cetera, okay? Now, when some, this is what's really important that you get. This is why I'm talking about make every decision from inspiration versus negative motivation. Can you already see where that's different now? So neocortex is inspiration, amygdala is negative motivation. When the amygdala is firing hard, you're, you're, you cannot be using the neocortex. Those two parts of the brain do not light up at the same time. So when y'all are like, I can't because the dog died and COVID and da da da, all I hear is amygdala. That's not your neocortex, the God, the God center, the inspiration, the like higher version of you. That's like, you know, I'm here because I'm here for a reason. And God gave me this, this body to live this life here on this planet, which is the neocortex and the prefrontal cortex. So like, um, how do I say this? Not a credo, but what's the other word I'm trying to say here? A philosophy, my philosophy in life is that I make every decision, every decision from inspiration as opposed to negative motivation. Even making my bed is for inspiration, not negative motivation. Like every decision I make in my life, whether I'm gonna go somewhere or not, do something or not, be with someone or not, think like uh, calls, like every decision as a philosophy for me personally is how, how and it wasn't, so it's not a zero sum game. Like it's, it's gradually gotten better. So it's like, I used to make decisions I thought from inspiration, but they were actually driven by negative motivation. So you have to really look and I'll have you do an exercise. Like, so now it's like, why am I doing that thing? Because that thing inspires me, right? Not how much is it cost? How much time is it gonna take? Like I have to focus group, like what's this person gonna think? 
I don't give a fuck about what people think, to be clear. Maybe that wasn't clear to you before, but I'll just say it again. I have zero fucks to give about what anybody thinks about my choices in life. Because I make them from inspiration. And that's why I've become successful. Because I don't do the hocus pocus, like the amygdala dance anymore. I'm not like fear-based running from the saber tooth top tiger. I am, I want to be, you know, I'm like, Richard Branson, Tony, like montage. I'm going to do this on my, on my stories one day, like yacht, Richard Branson, montage, Tony Robbins, doom, 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 Bali. Like that's the vibe I'm living into. Not saber tooth tiger running away from it, sucking my thumb in a corner. Do you see the difference energetically? Okay. This is a big deal. So let me tell you one more piece. Um, when we're, in the process, so again, let's think about amygdala, neocortex, and prefrontal cortex, okay? So those two things are never firing at the same time. You got that? So when you're in a fight with your partner and you're like, but you're an asshole, and but you're a stinky this, and your socks on the counter, and blah, 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 that's all amygdala, okay? That's it. It's not, yeah, but Adele, you don't understand I had a hard childhood. It doesn't matter. It's your amygdala is firing. You're not making decisions from your higher self. Does that make sense? If you can just take it to the brain and just go, if I put my brain on an MRI, functional MRI and I looked at the scans of the brain, I would see that my amygdala and the hippocampal centers, which are all part of my fight or flight, my, my, my adrenaline would be rushing and norepinephrine and all those hormones would be rushing for survival because I would need to run away from a bear. That's what's happening in your body. But you're not running away from a bear. You're so afraid to make a decision because you're going to be wrong. So the amygdala doesn't know the difference though. The neocortex is telling you, it's like I always say, God speaks to you in a voice of inspiration, not a voice of fear. Never forget that. He's not saying this person is bad and you're right. That's not God's voice. That's fear's voice. So when you're making a change in your life, we talked about that elicits the terror barrier, but more specifically, okay, anytime we're changing something, now, I really want you to think about this. Think about something that you want to change or you desire to have. Like, so you want to maybe move somewhere or buy something or go somewhere or do like something's changing. Yeah. Okay. The first place that people go in their mind and raise your hand if this makes sense for you after I say it, the first thing they focus on is what they're going to lose as opposed to what they're going to gain. Did you get that? So let me give you an example. The minute you have to make a change, even if like having a baby is an example, are we going to have a baby or not? Most people focus on they're going to lose sleep. They're going to lose freedom. They don't focus on what they're going to gain. It's a natural part of the process. You, you go, should I do the program? I'm going to lose money. It's going to cost me money. So you focus on the loss of the money as opposed to the gain of the information. Yes. Should I go to Bermuda? I don't know. The loss is we're going to have to spend money to go there. Yes. But what are you going to gain? The experience of being in Bermuda. But our brain, because the amygdala gets fired up because it notices change, it focuses directly on loss as opposed to gain. This is what we need to reframe for 